Hey, what's up, everyone? Sam Shaw here, founder of Wall Street Mastermind. I am back today with another client interview for you guys and uh, really excited to have Akash on with us today. Uh, Akash just finished going through the summer 2023 recruiting process. And, uh, you know, he's a, oh, I guess, a longtime client of ours. He's, you know, been with us for just over a year now. And so we've gotten to know, know him pretty well and uh, he was able to get a really, really good outcome um for his summer internship so i wanted to get him on here to just talk to you guys about how he was able to kind of accomplish that and uh hopefully also share some insights along the way um that will potentially help you as well so uh with that said akash thank you for taking the time to be here with us today and uh to start off if you don't mind just maybe quickly introducing yourself so that people kind of know who you are yeah absolutely yeah thanks so much sam for having me um my name is Akash. I'm currently going to be a junior at Penn. Um, and I'm from the East Coast area from Jersey. And yeah, uh, that's a quick background on me. And I'm sure we're going to kind of talk about how I came to know about Wall Street Mastermind and all that good stuff. So yeah, really happy to be on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so let's go back to the beginning because um, I know, you know, you joined us. I mean, you just finished sophomore year. Like I said, you've been with us for just over a year. So you joined like towards the end of freshman year, right? right. Like, you also go to Penn, which is like, I feel like everyone at Penn wants to go into investment banking. <laughs> so, yeah. so like how, how early on did you realize that, hey, like I also want to do investment banking? Was it like freshman year or like when did you, I mean, obviously it's freshman year, but like at mm -hmm. what point during freshman year did you realize that? Yeah, yeah. I think um, even if you don't think you're going to go into that field coming into Penn, I think Penn has a way of, you know, just introducing it. It's a little bit of like osmosis. You just come into the system and everyone seems to be going into somewhere finance related. So yeah, I mean, I definitely, um, that did have some influence on me. I think I was actually lucky enough to know a little bit about, you know, um, kind of those common career paths of like banking and consulting, actually even prior to college. My dad's actually a finance professor himself. He's been He's been teaching um, at like a couple schools, I think for maybe five years now, like he's not traditionally in academia, but yeah, I mean, he went to business school. Um, he went to Columbia for his MBA and he kind of uh, introduced me to all of those things. I think shortly after I got into Penn, he was like um, telling me to maybe consider these types of paths because I didn't quite honestly know what I wanted to do. I came in thinking I'd do neuroscience, but was pretty unsure. Um, I didn't want to go pre-med, but um, yeah, I guess that's kind of where it all started. Like even before reaching Penn, I was just thinking about things I found interesting and it seemed like I did have an interest at least very vaguely in something business or finance related. And um, Penn is definitely one of the best places to be to do that. So I thought, you know, why not uh, consider it? And then, yeah, once I did get to Penn, I did go through a couple of those info sessions that would be hosted. It was all over Zoom, unfortunately, but um, I just thought, you know, I'll just hop on and see what they're about and learn a little bit more. So went to a couple sessions and um, yeah, it got me thinking a little bit more about it. I remember there was actually one session at the boutique bank I'll be working at now. And I think that was actually the turning point for me because I went to that session and um, there was actually an upperclassman there who uh, ended up transferring into Warden. And I was in the college at the time because I was intending to study neuroscience. And I was a little bit interested in maybe going through the same process as him and learning a bit more about banking. So I ended up uh, trying to, I didn't even realize I was doing it at the time, but I set up a networking call with him after the info session. And we ended up talking for, I think, over an hour. And he was really, really helpful. And kind of just uh, helping me understand a bit more about the career. And I think I asked some of the worst questions you could ask on a networking call. I asked all those questions you probably shouldn't ask. Like, you know, I, I was asking like very much like lifestyle questions, like work-life balance, all the things like you, you should never ask. But I mean, I think he just understood where I was coming from because I was a freshman. And I think because of the fact that I was recruiting, I, I wasn't even recruiting, but I was just talking to him so early on. I think he just accepted the questions. And honestly, I think it was something he was considering as well, because he was considering going into private equity, recruiting after that. And I was just asking, I mean, just lifestyle 
on a lifestyle basis, sometimes people think, oh, like people do investment banking and then private equity is like the holy grail after that. But is it really? And, you know, we were just talking about all those things. And he was also giving me advice on, you know, I mean, a lot of people also say, you know, if you're just trying to do, I mean, quite honestly, a lot of people might go into banking thinking it's because of the money. Right. And I mean, that's, that's definitely a fair thing to assume. I mean, it does pay a lot. And for a lot of people, um, that's something important. Um, you need to consider in a post-grad career, but, um, we were also talking about other careers you could do, but it seemed like after discussing that with him, um, it seemed like banking was something I would have particularly enjoyed. And it was also something I even included in my, like why banking answers specifically for that bank when I was recruiting with them. But yeah, I think it was at that point that I started thinking much more closely and much more in depth about, is this something I could actually see myself doing? Um, and I still remember it was after that call, I had to get my COVID vaccination and I went to New Jersey with my dad. And then I was just in the car with my dad, like having like a, I don't know, like an early life crisis. I don't even know what you'd call it, but I was just thinking about holy crap, like I'm, I'm only a freshman, but I have to already start thinking about like what job I'm going to do when I graduate. And what if this ends up becoming what I do like for the next 20 years, because you know, like the first job you have after college, it'll tend to be the route you go on after. And um, I remember I was just in the car with my dad for like over an hour and we were just talking and talking and talking about, is this the right thing to do? Is it not? And I mean, my dad was definitely supportive, but I think it was more so me. I was very much unsure, but um, I, for a bunch of different reasons, I realized that it was something personally that I thought would be a very fulfilling career outside for the, at least like two years. And, you know, we'll see where the road takes it after. I think honestly, I might consider going into banking in the long term as well. I mean, I think you can't really know for sure until you do it. Right. So I, I, I thought it was interesting enough to pursue, um, at least after I graduate. And I think, there aren't too many other jobs that can provide you such a wide skill set. And yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to work, you're going to work some long hours, but I think um, the skill set you create from it is definitely valuable. And I think employers for your whole life will value that. Absolutely. So I guess once you decided, and thanks for that really um, detailed breakdown, but once you decided, what were some of the things that you started kind of doing on your own to kind of mm -hmm. work towards that goal? Cause I assume yeah. you knew that it was probably going to be difficult, right? Or not like it's going to be competitive, right? And so like, what did you start doing um, at that point? Yeah, no, and I think it definitely is like difficult and competitive, even coming from a place like Penn, um, just because of the fact that, yeah, I mean, everyone says like Penn is very much a target school, but you also need to consider the fact that there's at least half a thousand people applying for these positions. And you know, they can't take half a thousand people at every single bank. So yeah, I mean, you, you might not get your top choice. You might not even get a bank. I know some of my friends actually at Warden are still looking, you know, they still haven't been able to get a job. So it's definitely competitive. And I was definitely thinking about that. But um, I think what I, to answer your question, what I started doing was, I just kept doing what I was doing in terms of going to these info sessions and getting my face out there and trying to speak to as many people as possible. I, I always heard, you know, networking is important just in general. So I thought, you know, why not put myself out there as much as possible just to also see the job. And I think it was very helpful. And I can also like touch back on this later on kind of how I ended up getting my offer. I think it very much was due to the fact that I just so happened to go to some of these freshman info sessions. But aside from that, um, I think, you know, some of the biggest things are, you know, first of all, like GPA, I think I was, I was doing good on that part. Um, but also something very important is having, you know, relevant internships. And also, of course, like building that technical skill set. Um, and I think those were things that I particularly was a little lost on at first. Uh, I think it's, it's kind of like the the biggest issue, and I think you mentioned this, Sam, in like some of the videos I ended up watching later on, like before I considered Wall Street Mastermind, is it's always super hard to get that first internship, right? Because you go and apply for an internship, and then they want to see like, okay, we'll hire you if you have relevant experience, right? But then how do you get that first relevant experience? Because everyone is asking for that. So yeah, it's tough. And um, I think I definitely felt a little bit behind. A lot of my friends already had, you know, freshman and summer internships lined up. And 
Also something I really was not aware of until I watched some of your videos was how early this recruiting process happens. And because of the fact that, you know, I mean, I'm already done, like, because my sophomore spring semester, I'm already, you know, set with like, what could be my full time job, if I take the return offer, if I'm lucky enough to receive one. Um, and that just made me realize that I only have one actual summer internship before I start recruiting. So it made me realize how important this freshman summer internship is. And I think, given the fact that I was, I felt a little behind on that. And also, you know, I just wanted to boost my chances as much as possible. Um, I think that's kind of what led me to see, look, dive a little deeper into something like Wall Street Mastermind. And I think you do really, really well with your marketing. I, I have seen you on like LinkedIn so many times before that. Like I always just was scrolling through, but I never really considered it. So I thought, you know, why not? Let me actually click on this, you know, and um, I decided to do that. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm sure so many people thought it was a scam at first. And like they're thinking, uh -huh. oh, it's is this legit? And um, yeah, I, I think that was, I, I think that was the biggest thing for me, but I did like an insane amount of due diligence after that. I was watching every single one of your videos. I think I watched like all of them, but I went through all the videos. I watched like client interviews like this and it seemed legit. Um, and then I scheduled one of those 30 minute calls, um, was able to learn a little bit more about it. And I think after that, it was it was pretty set in stone. I think this whole thing happened pretty quickly after um, I kind of had that talk with my dad in the car about you know what I wanted to do with my life, and mm -hmm. um, I ended up showing him this. I showed him the Wall Street Mastermind program, and he he thought it was super convincing as well. Because I mean, he never like yes, he was familiar with banking um, because he went to Columbia for his MBA, and a lot of people were going that route, but. Yeah, he decided not to go that route. So he was, even though he was a finance professor, he was very unfamiliar with all of this recruiting stuff. And it was pretty amazing to him too, like how early this process starts and like everything you need to prepare. And I'm sure it's only going to get more and more competitive. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think thinking about all those things um, definitely made this more of a compelling thing to consider. And yeah, there's definitely a price tag. And I know for a lot of people, that's probably the biggest turnoff. The way I thought about it, and I think the way you also brought it up in some of your you know, talks was the fact that it pays off exponentially. I mean, if you're going into banking, um, I think, especially now, I mean, I think you, the thing you're offering now and kind of what I was interested to when I was negotiating with you on um, how we could consider the program is like, if I get a banking offer because you're so confident, right. I think over 90%, um, maybe even more than that receive an offer. Um, I wanted to make sure that it actually paid off. Right. So, um, and that also, you know, just provides more trust that, yeah, it actually would work is that, yeah, like I'll pay if I do get an offer. Right. So, um, you're willing to do that because you're so confident with your service. And I think that's kind of just built into the um, structure now. So I, I honestly don't see why you wouldn't, right? Because you get all your money back if you don't get an offer. It really doesn't make much sense um, to not accept the opportunity because yeah, it's, I mean, thinking about the long-term impact this can have on your income, I, it's, it's very marginal, the amount of money you're asking for. I think it's very reasonable. So especially for all it can provide. So I definitely think it was worth it. Yeah, no, thank, thanks for, thanks for, thanks for the plug there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I mean, no, seriously, though, joking aside, um, yeah, I mean, we try as much as possible to make this a no-brainer offer for people, right? Like, we understand that, um, you know, the, it, it is an investment, but sometimes, like, people can be afraid of investing, right? Like, a lot of people yeah. don't invest, not just saying in Wall Street Management, but, like, in general, a lot of people don't invest in the stock market, for example, because, they are worried about losing their money, right? Which, um, and so like, there's always some risk involved with any investment, but the question is not like, is there risk or not? It's, it's like, do the potential rewards or upside far outweigh the risks? All right. Typically, if it does, then the right move is technically you're supposed to invest, right? Yeah. So for us, you know, we just think about, Hey, we know the upside is tremendous. Uh, and I think it continues to become 
even greater. I mean, all the banks raised their pay last year, right? So now the oh, ROI yeah. went higher. But uh, but we we try to also think about how to reduce the other side of the equation for people in terms of like minimizing their risk. And so um, yeah, I mean, I think we've done a pretty good job of doing that. We're we're kind of the only company out there now that um, even offers something like a money back guarantee. So yeah, um, you know, that's kind of like our effort to because to your point, like you're you're absolutely right. I think. There are so many bad services out there that people have just been burned too many times. And so I don't blame people for naturally being like skeptical right off the bat. Right. Oh, and I think it's, right. I don't think it's a bad idea to have some healthy amount of skepticism before you jump into anything. But I think the more important part is, okay, if you're skeptical, what are you, what are you actually going to do to either like validate or invalidate your right. thesis, right? Like to your point, you did a ton of due diligence. It wasn't like you just blindly jumped in, but like you watched all of our videos, all of the content, you probably got a feel for like, how does this guy actually coach? And like, does he actually know what he's talking about? You watch all the testimonials you heard from many, many different clients probably some even from, you know, the very same school that you go to, right? And so like, there are ways to, at least, you know, I think we provide enough, um, we try to be as transparent as possible and we provide enough evidence out there that like, if you really want to do your homework, it's not hard to like get to the truth, right? Like, and, and, and but I think like the problem comes when people kind of get lazy about it and then they just, mm -hmm. they think, oh, this must be a scam because all companies like this are scams. And then uh, maybe they read like one or two things online and then they just take it for what it's worth. And it's like in, in this day and age, like people say whatever they want, right? It's, yeah. just, it's almost like politics It's very, you have like Democrats and Republicans and they're gonna say complete opposite things and say the other person is fake news, right? <laughs> so like in this, in this day and age, it's especially important, I feel like to have just like, critical thinking skills and be able to evaluate the evidence for yourself and think as your own person, as opposed right. to just taking what anyone else says at face value. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Cause the funny, thing, the funny thing is like, I think like a lot of people that um, claim that we're a scam or not a lot, like pretty much all the people that claim we're a scam are people that have actually never done the program. So oh, they, 100%. Yeah. So they're just like on the outside looking like this must be a scam and they have like a lot of conviction and then like all the people that have done the program, nobody says it's a scam because they've been through it. It can't even be a scam because you're, for it to be defined as a scam, you'd need to take the money without providing any value. And the thing is, you're only taking our money if we end up with an offer and we're able to be given value. So like, I, I really think it's impossible to be considered a scam, especially now with the like, you know, money back guarantee. I mean, that's, that's, I think it's really phenomenal that you're doing that because it really just yeah. It adds so much more legitimacy as well. I think um, you really can't argue with that. Yeah, I mean, we're now hearing uh, we're, we're, we're hearing a lot less uh, scam accusations nowadays. So I think um, people are starting to realize that, oh, actually, like these guys are legitimate and, and they're yeah. still around. I think like, dude, in this day and age, it's hard to like be a scam artist and stick around for five years. Yeah. Like, I mean, oh, like I mean, you guys have been growing. Yeah, like all, all of our all of our clients would just go back to school and tell all of their classmates, like, oh my God, I got scammed by Wall Street Mash Mind. And then like <laughs> word of right. mouth will just kind of spread itself, right? Like so um anyway, we don't have to belabor the point. Um uh, let's get back to uh kind of like your recruiting process. Um so by the way, it sounds like you're we're pretty fortunate that your dad is just like super supportive because it sounds like oh, you had this conversation with him and he just got it like he just understood oh, yeah. whereas yeah. I, I think that like for a lot of students um a lot of students talk to us and like they are really excited and they really want to join the program and then they go and approach their parents about it and then the parents are like what the hell are you talking about right because they're like what, what yeah, is they don't know what banking is etc yeah, yeah. Yeah, they don't know what banking is. They don't know how hard it is to get in. They don't know like how, how, how high they pay. They don't know like, I mean, during their time, they didn't have anything like this that could like help them get a really, really elite job, right? And so they're like, 
it's just a foreign concept to them. And then, so when, when you combine that with like, okay, you ask them for money for something that they don't understand what it is, a lot of times parents just kind of like shut down. Right. And yeah. so, so like, I think that um, it sounds like you didn't have to try that hard to convince them, but I was going to say like a lot of times people have to like really think about um, how they go about convincing their parents that this is yeah. a good investment, you know? 100%, 100%. I think I was definitely like blessed in that fact that, you know, I had, you know, someone that was familiar with the field. And also I, I was like kind of showing the videos. I think my dad was kind of watching some of them with me. So we were kind of going through the process together. And yeah, I mean, definitely, I don't think he knew the degree to which this was, um, especially, you know, I think he kind of had the fact that, you know, oh, you're going to Penn, you know, like you can just get it right. But um, it, we realized, you know, that's not the case. And I, I also like very much unfamiliar with the process, but I yeah. think, you know, even if you don't go through the program, there's like so much like content you just have out there for free. That's like insanely useful. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, like it, there was a lot of really good stuff there that just like makes you much more familiar with the process. And yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I mean, it sounds like not only did you do do due diligence on the program yourself, you had your dad go through it with you, which yeah. I think is really smart. So yeah. Um, but okay, so then like you joined the program and then like, what what did you do in the program? Like, so, like walk yeah. through kind of like, you know, the last year or so, right? Mm -hmm. um, what were some of the things that you did in the program and like, what did you find? What were the things that you found to be the most helpful for you, I guess, yeah. as far as recruiting goes? Yeah, so I think just starting out, I can give a bit of a timeline. I think I ended up joining june like very early or late may i think around late may of my freshman year so my freshman year was already wrapping up it might have already been done and the first thing that was immediately on my mind was um getting a summer internship for freshman year um a lot of you know people already had something on and i knew how important it was because it was probably going to be my only summer internship that i'd have before recruiting starts and at that time i had nothing finance related at all so it was definitely important to me and something I even saw in the videos that also was a very compelling thing for me to consider Wall Street Mastermind was the fact that you guys have um, a system that really works that gets you a finance related internship in almost a week. And yeah, it was that quick for me as well. I mean, you definitely I, I should clarify all these things. It doesn't just magically happen. You need to put in an insane amount of effort, too. But there's, it's like a very, very structured process where everything is there for you as long as you just go through it. But um, yeah, I mean, as long as you are able to put in the work, you will yield the results. I should clarify that before I keep going. But yeah, um, I went through the modules. Um, actually, yeah, I think the first thing is, of course, the resume build out. Um, I went through that. That That's also, um, I think, one of the best things that you offer. Um, there's just some like, some tricks as well like some tips that and like just resume etiquette that you don't really know i don't know if i can say this but you know just like simple things but like putting it all the way to the end of the line like it's something you don't really think about but it makes such a big difference like even for my sophomore summer i i lined up a banking internship just to put on my resume before um for recruiting and one of the things i think definitely helped was um there's actually someone from there who also went to warden and he was there for like, kind of like my super day interview. And he just complimented my resume. He's like, oh dude, I love this resume. Like so many people, you know, they, they don't really pay attention to the resume, but this is like perfect, right? And I mean, I, I only have Sam to thank for that. I mean, it really is like one of the most aesthetically pleasing resumes. And honestly, like if your resume looks good, that's like, like half of the battle already there. So yeah, I mean, just formatting things like that and making sure everything is as, you know, compelling and polished as it can be, um, worked on that. And that's like a process that continues happening throughout. Um, I mean, Sam provides those resume reviews consistently. And then after that, um, yeah, then it was like lining up that freshman internship and the process just works really well. You know, you put in the effort. I think I was just, um, it was like around 11 PM and I was just going through all of them. I just went through, did an all nighter and like just reached out to a bunch of people through um, the, like kind of the internship funnel, you can say that Sam has kind of figured out and, um, yeah, I was 
uh, is kind of like networking. You know, you have to reach out to a bunch of different places, but was lucky enough to hear back from a couple and then um, went through an interview that week and then ended up lining up something by the end of that week. And yeah, uh, it's it was a little worrying before um, the process because uh, quite honestly, I, I, do, I don't even know where I would have been had it not been Wall Street Mastermind. I, I was very unmotivated before. I, you know, I thought I was just too behind on the process. I mean, who knows? I probably wouldn't have had anything related um, in my finance internship. Like I wouldn't have had a financial aid internship my freshman summer. And that might have just been a slippery slope. You know, after that, you know, just I'm thinking, oh man, I don't even have a financial aid internship. Everyone that else at Penn does. Right. And, you know, who knows? I might have not even ended up um, going into banking because I was just too behind. I mean, that's because how again, it was. Because again, you, you joined Walsh Mastermind at the end of April of freshman year. Yeah. So it was literally like you, freshman summer would have started in May. Yeah. So it was like now or never, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Cause I, I was applying, I think late May or early June. And yeah, I think I started the, okay. Yeah. I remember now I started my internship the first week of June and I basically applied, I think like one, two weeks before that. And usually that's not the process. I mean, you have to kind of apply for an internship like months in advance, but I was lucky enough to get it. And it was a really great internship experience. Like I should also clarify, like, I think it very, it very much does vary on who you end up, um, working with but for mine it was like with the private equity search fund and um the guy was great um he was super helpful I learned a ton had a lot of stuff I could talk about and it also just was a great introduction for me to the world of finance so um a very valuable internship too so not just you know something put on the resume but something I could actually speak about and honestly that's the most important thing so um yeah that was that was great and um yeah, I, I kind of didn't do too much with Wall Street Mastermind other than that um, and going to office hours. Um, Sam has these office hours he does twice a week um, and, you know, just kind of soaking in everyone else's stuff, the questions they'd ask. Sometimes I'd pop in and ask some things, but I think I was just a little bit too early. Maybe a lot of this stuff was about questions that may not have been as relevant, but I think it was just nice to be surrounded by that. Um, yeah. And I think it definitely just keeps you in that mindset. Um because yeah, I know, like, I'm just remembering, I think I was in like my psychology class this semester. And like one of my friends in that class was thinking about recruiting for banking, but it's just so late. Like once you start thinking about it, sophomore spring, like, I, I don't, I don't even know if he's applying now because it's just it, the process is just insanely accelerated. You, you kind of just have to be in the know much, much earlier. It's kind of like, yeah, you kind of have to know freshman year so that you can set up an internship that, you know, kind of builds you for that, that summer. And then yeah, after that, I guess fast forwarding, I kind of started thinking more seriously about recruiting again. I'd say like fall of my sophomore year. So I came back on campus. Um, I'm doing a dual degree now. So I'm also in Warden um, and that kind of helped as well. And then uh, did like some relevant competitions, et cetera. And then just try to, you know, build up the resume and then networking, info sessions, all that stuff started picking up. But I guess, yeah, the networking portion, again, was something I needed to think about more seriously. And again, that's something Sam has built out very well. Uh, I think the most helpful thing in that is there are these email templates Sam has for pretty much any scenario. And it's so helpful because I think like one of the biggest differentiators in banking is just those little things, right? Like it's the resume, how polished is it, your emails, how does it come off to the person reading it, especially these bankers who have like, you know, five seconds to read it, but you know, they, they pay attention to those details and it kind of separates you from other people that are trying to network. And it can be the difference of, okay, I'll spend like the 15 minutes I have with this guy instead of this guy. So yeah, I mean, it definitely helps. And especially those follow-up emails. I think I was even reading the Slack one day, but yeah, I, or it might've been one of the office hours, but I know you were mentioning like the third follow-up email. I'm yeah. sure you've already, you said you, you've heard this before, but yeah, it works really, really well. Um, I think that's being persistent. And in the way that, I mean, you guys will, find out if you end up joining the program but the way some of them are written out is just it it sounds really really it works really well and it's been proven to work really well even in my networking efforts um 
and yeah, I guess I can go a little bit more into detail about that process for me. Um, so I guess around January after winter break, you know, I kind of had the resume set up. My grades were good. I had the dual degree with Warden. And then I was thinking more seriously now about, okay, networking. That's the next, that's the next step to the process because yeah, I mean, even at Penn, people think like, yeah, if you have a 4.0 at Warden, that's going to get you a first round. It's not. Uh, unfortunately, even in that scenario, you need to network um, because, as I said, you know, there's just so many kids applying for it. It's, it's yeah. pretty insane. I mean, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll, that's I'll the next one, thing you kind of have I'll to do. I'll add one thing, add one yeah. thing it, um, because, you know, we've worked with a lot of Penn and Warden kids. I mean, Penn and Warden is probably, not surprisingly, our number one school in terms of where our clients actually come from, right? Um, and I'm also, I'm just, I just pulled up our Penn roster. I'm actually um, pretty glad to say that. I mean, we, not surprisingly, pretty much virtually everyone at Penn and Warren gets into banking. But when I look at like the Jeep, the average GPA of the students that come into our program from Penn and Warren, uh, the average is 3.78. Yeah, no, it's high. Like that's the average, right? Yeah. So. Like, so like just by having like a 4.0 GPA, like, I mean, obviously it's great, but like, it, it doesn't really make you super special. Like I look at these GPAs, I have a 4.0, 3.85, 3.96, 3.96, 3.91, 3.9, 3.5. It's like 3.97, 4.0, like everyone is up there. Yeah, right? no. That's how yeah. crazy your school is. <laughs> yeah, and then that's the kind of the thing that I guess people outside looking in don't really consider is that, you just think like, oh yeah, you go to Penn, you have a 4.0, you're fine, you'll get something. I mean, yeah, maybe you might get something, but maybe not like one of the top places that you really want. Um, and yeah, for those places, like that's, unfortunately, it's just not enough. You do need to, it comes to those things like, oh, do they remember your name? And like, did they enjoy a conversation with you? Um, I mean, I was even speaking with like the person I mentioned earlier um, for my sophomore banking internship, he worked in banking um, at a bulge bracket before that. And he was kind of just giving me some tips as well, because he was familiar with the recruiting process a bit. And yeah, like what he was saying is the HR will kind of just comb through those things, comb through like hundreds of resumes. And yeah, you'll get through that part based on your school and GPA. But then they have like, let's say 50 resumes. And what he said he'd have to do um, as an analyst is, you know, look through those 50 resumes and then just based on the names he remembers or like the people he liked talking to, then he chooses like maybe 10 of them, right? So it comes down to those things of networking. It's, it's a very, very important part of the process. And yeah, going back to the Wall Street Mastermind program, um, Sam has built out with those email templates. I think that's one of the most useful things. And then also you hear some mock networking calls, you hear some good ones, you hear some bad ones, you hear some Sam's critique of it. Um, and I think, again, it's just like, as you go through more practice, um, they become more, more and more like just fluid conversations. Um, I think you, the you, felt, you felt a big difference, like from your initial uh, info sessions that you went to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't asking about, you know, work life balance <laughs> anymore, fortunately. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I, I definitely knew the right questions to ask. And I think, yeah, one of the most important things, I mean, I don't know, I'll just say it, I think is, you know, like just making it a conversation, you know, and making it feel very fluid. I think a lot of people go into these networking calls and they're kind of like, oh, question one, and then they answer and then they're like, okay, question two. And it's just <laughs> like, you know, I mean, you need, I think like one of the most like useful pieces of just like life advice I've ever gotten is from my kindergarten class when they're like treat people the way you want to be treated and like just putting yourself in another person's shoes and just thinking about it like that right I mean you know they're working insane hour days and they're taking the time out of their like busy day they're probably tired to get on a call with you you want to make it like you know as like just fun and relaxed as possible for them right I mean they know you're like a college kid just thinking about recruiting for banking so you know maybe just make it a little more you know like fun interesting um, or at least like, don't make it seem like a chore for them. Right. And I think that just comes down to conversational skills. And I think, you know, some people are just naturally better at it than others, but 
even if you're not, I think Sam has a framework built where it makes it a lot easier. Um, and I think that was very, very valuable um, in terms of asking the right questions and also just the email template. I mean, personally for me, I think that was the most valuable thing because you're gonna be sending a lot of emails. Um, and yeah, uh, I think I was also very fortunate in that process in that I, I another piece of advice I'd have is just go to everything, right? Like put your foot out there in every single um, event or whatever you can go to, even if you don't think you'll actually end up applying or considering this place or whatever it might be, right? Because it, who knows, it can make a difference in the end. And I think in my case, that was very, very much true. Um, I ended up going to one of these like random info sessions that my club does at Penn and it was with like a speaker at, I think like Goldman. Um, and I just ended up going on there, you know, asked some good questions kind of using Sam's framework and uh, reached out after. And this guy was super helpful. He was just giving me, I ended up getting on a, like one-on-one -on -one call with him the next day. And he gave me like so many names. I was really, really fortunate in that I kind of didn't have to send many cold emails. I think I was very fortunate in that process, but it was also because of the fact that Sam kind of, you know, taught me the right way to, you know, work through this. And the guy really liked the conversation with me. We spoke for a very long time and, you know, we still keep in touch. And he just, I think he's connected me to over like 20 bankers. Um, wow. Yeah. So he's been super helpful. And I think, yeah, like it's luck, but I think it's also like, I'm sure you guys have heard, like, I don't know what the exact phrase is, right? But, you know, you get luckier the more opportunities you put yourself in, right? Yeah, I like to say it, you, everyone needs to get lucky, but yeah. uh, you got to create your own luck, right? Yeah. Um, you got to, you, you got to, you got to like position yourself to be in the right place at the right time doing the right things. And if you don't do that, then like a lot of people just miss out on these opportunities, right? Like someone else could have gone to the same event that you went to. In fact, a lot of other people did go to the same event that you went to mm -hmm. and they probably didn't get the type of help that you got from- Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think there were like over a hundred people there, right? But it's just putting your foot out there. I think, yeah, there's over, I think that's something that people don't consider is, yeah, like you can go to these events, but honestly, it doesn't mean anything if you don't like- get your name out there because yeah I'm, i think there were like over 100 people at that specific event but um I, I i doubt anyone got the level of connection that i have with them now and i think that was just a matter of me putting my foot out there i think maybe only five to ten people ended up asking a question at that event and then i think maybe me and who knows maybe one or two other people may have actually followed up with them and spoken yeah. about that yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Cool. So yeah, I mean, sounds like you did really well with you. Built, so you spent your first few months in Wall Street Management building up your resume. You got that to a good place. Uh, you started networking sophomore year as recruiting got closer. Yeah. closer. You did well in that. Basically, those yeah. are like the two things that you need to do to get as many interviews as possible, right? right. Uh, did you end up getting a good amount of interviews then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess for me. Um, so yeah, I mean, Sam was just doing so well with me that I ended up getting an offer pretty early. And uh, I did have a lot of interviews that came after my, you know, my exploding offer deadline. So unfortunately, I couldn't go to them. But yeah, I mean, interviews, luckily for me, were not too much of an issue when I networked with people. And I think that's, I mean, that just goes to show it, you kind of just have to do it. Um, it really comes down to I think like a, a good kind of like strategy I approached it with is, you know, use Sam's framework and then, you know, it leads to a conversation with someone else there. And then that leads to a conversation with someone else there. So as soon as you, you know, the hardest part is always like, even with internships, just landing that first person at that bank, that first, you know, relevant internship. Yeah. Um, and I think Sam really helps with that. And then after that, it's usually smooth sailing um, once you kind of have it all built out well. So yeah. yeah. And then I guess I can kind of dive into the actual interviews, right? So yeah, once I started getting those um, interviews, uh, that's when the rest of the modules came in really handy. Um, I think for a lot of like, you know, the boutiques, um, the first rounds tend to be much more technical based. So for me, I was prioritizing that. And um, Sam's modules are like gold, like those technical, um, those technical modules he has are, 
especially for me, I, I love watching videos. I'm much more of a, like, I, I learn best when it's like a video, um, as opposed to, you know, like reading, you know, like an M9400 guide. Um, and it's just so succinct. It covers everything you need to know. Um, and nothing more, right? It's, it's right there, even for like the more technical places where I, you know, I had interviews at it was, it, it was more than enough. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's really one of the most valuable things for me during the interview process was those technical modules. Um, yeah. And you'll definitely see that it's, it's structured in a great way. Um, he has questions that are, you know, kind of the fundamental bread and butter, you know, and more complex ones as well for every single section. Um, it works really well. And Sam also, you know, I got on a uh, mock interview with him. I wish I did a little earlier. I think that was kind of bad on me, but um, <laughs> yeah, Sam's more than willing to get on mocks with you guys and walk you through questions that might be confusing you, et cetera. And that was really, really helpful. I think the one thing that was more on me was I did not put as much effort into the behavioral part. I think also um, that was just given the fact that these interviews were coming up pretty quickly after my networking efforts. So I prioritized the technical modules. And I also, um, I just felt that if I had to choose between the two, I, I think like I was, I would be able to handle the behavioral a little bit better. Um, just mm -hmm. given that I, I think I'm a bit more of a conversational person. So I could approach it well hopefully um and it did end up working out in that aspect but yeah i think i did the other, thing, the other thing you can kind of gauge too is um just through your networking efforts right like if you're yeah. if your networking conversations are going well and a lot of bankers are willing to help you and refer you and whatever then that means that okay you're probably a pretty likable guy right mm -hmm. um but like if you're not getting any referrals on your networking a lot of times people think it's like Oh, maybe my email's wrong, or maybe no, I'm no. it's like a lot of times it's like, no, your behavioral answers aren't really um aren't really doing it. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. No, that's that's a huge, huge thing. I mean, with banking, there's so many, so many smart people, right? I mean, so many people at Penn and other target schools, even like people that aren't at target schools, but are just like complete rock stars in terms of like technicals, etc. Like they all know their stuff, right? So it really just comes down to, I mean, it, it can be a good thing for some people or, or some people don't like it being this way, but it just comes down to, do they like you? Right. Because at the end of the day, I mean, a lot of people, they do say this stuff, right? Like you can learn a lot of the technicals pretty quickly. Um, if you go through the right structure and you have something like, you know, Sam's modules, he makes it even easier, right? Like it's, it's at the palm of your fingertip. Uh, uh, oh my God, I can't speak to that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? Um, so yeah, it just comes down to do people like you, right? And a lot of that, yeah, I mean, I guess you, to some extent, you can't really teach that, but you can teach at least the structure of how to, you know, at least like provide examples, tell stories. Um, it's very important stuff. Um, and I think that sometimes people don't really take that into consideration, like you were saying, Sam, right? Like they, tend to you know put the blame on something else but mo most of the time it does come down to those like simple things of yeah like would they want to work with you at you know 1 a.m and i will say on the behavioral side uh that ironically is the part where i think it's the hardest for students to figure out whether their answers are good enough or not mm -hmm. right? because of the technical stuff it's pretty black and white. It's like, yeah. you know, when you don't know how to answer a certain type of technical question. And then you're like, okay, I need to go and learn this. I need to work on this. On the behavioral stuff, it's like everybody has whatever answers they have prepared. And it always sounds good to the person <laughs> who prepared it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that, that's why they're using it. And, but like, obviously, um, it's not even about whether your answer is good or not. It's about, whether your behavioral answers are better than other people's <laughs> answers, right? Yeah. And so I think the part that's really missing for a lot of people is they don't have a way to accurately benchmark their own answers against other people's answers, which is why we do things like the mock interview hot seat so that you can mm. see other people in the program go through a mock interview and hear different types of answers or different ways that people are answering the same question. And sometimes their answers are 
worse than yours and you're like okay cool and then sometimes your answers are better than yours and you're like oh shoot like there's there's improvements that i can still make or there's yeah. another level i can get to and like even that level of self-awareness i think that's like that's a game changer right but like most people just don't have that you know what i'm saying like it's hard yeah i think that that's very much something you can't really tell um and I'm, I'm, you're probably going to be doing mock interviews with your friends right but i think for like behavioral interviews i mean there's only so much they can tell you i think like if you have someone like sam he actually knows what he's talking about um and he can actually provide a better outlook on how it's going to be perceived by a banker because i mean he was a banker for so long right and i'm sure i think you were involved in the process i believe right when yeah. you were back at ms so yeah i mean having that aspect is super valuable I wish I used that more. I think looking back, that's the one thing I wish I, I did a little bit more of, but um, I mean, we'll see. I definitely am, you know, considering maybe uh, doing full-time recruiting, seeing if I can do something else. So, I mean, Sam, maybe we'll, we'll run up some uh, mock behaviorals for that later, but yeah, yeah I mean, for now uh, I can definitely kind of just tell you I'm very happy with my offer. Um, I ended up, I, I, I guess I'll kind of go, um, full circle now and kind of tell you why those freshman info sessions were so helpful is yeah yeah um, so like the bank that I'll be working at specifically came from one of those freshman info sessions it was actually that specific one that led me to Wall Street Mastermind like after talking with that guy for an hour and like kind of figuring out what I wanted to do with my life then I realized hmm, maybe I think Wall Street Mastermind would be worth the investment I went through the program and then believe it or not, uh, I, I kept in touch with that guy because he kind of helped me with the whole process and getting into Warden. And I told him I got into Warden over the summer and he was like, oh man, that made my night, man. Huge congrats. Um, completely changed his trajectory. And he was like, I'm sure it'll change yours. You know, I just kept in touch with him after that. You know, Sam kind of teases you this as well, but um, it's good to keep like that lasting connection. I sent an email maybe couple months after that after you know I was doing like a competition and then he actually I think he was just too busy he never responded to that but I think once like my started my networking like January February I reached out to him again just to talk and catch up I told him you know I took all of your advice and think I'm going to recruit for banking and would love to talk to you and he actually never responded um I think for like a month or so but <laughs> out of nowhere like when I was in like kind of like I was getting first rounds and like things were picking up. He sends me an email on like Friday evening and he's like, Hey, so sorry, man, things were super busy, but um, yeah. Uh, I think like he asked for my phone number. He like called me right then. He's like, are you free to talk? And he's like, yeah, man. I mean, I really, really liked you. And like, I'm sure I was probably the only person he kept in touch with for that long. Um, Cause he kind of, I guess he remembered our conversation from over a year ago yeah. and he was like, yeah, dude, you're, you're awesome. the only person that he kept in touch with for that long or I, I think so. I mean, because yeah. because it was like fresh, it was over a year um, just to provide some context. He was an incoming full time analyst at that time. So he was a senior at Penn while I was a freshman. So yeah. then when I reached out to him in sophomore spring, he was a first year analyst there. Got so, it. yeah, he like reached out to me um, on the phone. He's like, yeah, dude, I have like over like 50 resumes here from Penn Kids, but I'm going to shoot yours over to my managing director. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, that it just goes to show, right? And I think I also like, I did one of these talks for one of my clubs with um, uh, a really, really big banker. And like, that's also one of the biggest pieces of advice he had, which was, you know, just put your foot out there because you never know what will happen. And that's exactly what happened with me, right? The guy that led me to Wall Street Mastermind is also the guy that, you know, ended up really pushing me for my own offer. Um, so yeah, uh, he he was a huge help after that. Um, he, I guess he was rooting for me, you know, because I kind of kept that connection with him for so long. And um, he was really pushing me to his MDs and then I had my first round and he was like, yeah, man, uh, it should go well, but I'm really, really pushing for you to get a super day. So he also, I'm sure had some sway in that. And then I ended up getting super day, spoke with everyone there. They really liked me. And also like a big part of that was, you know, like saying I had a huge connection with the analyst, but yeah, um, it ended up working out really well for me. And um, it just goes to show, yeah, that uh, everything else worked really well. So, I mean, I guess I can provide a little more disclosure on where exactly I'll be going. Um, I, 
it's going to be, I don't want to give the exact name just because it's a pretty um, small team specifically where I'll be working at, but it's one of the elite boutiques that you, yeah. you definitely know of. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. definitely happy with my offer. Yeah. I mean, I, and to your point, um, I, I think like kind of new as an elite boutique, um based on everything you're saying right because you got the offer really early mm -hmm. yeah. the boutiques that recruit the earliest right mm -hmm. and then and then it's the bulge bracket banks and then it's the middle market banks and so it's like so i always tell people like you know the elite boutiques are the hardest to get into for multiple reasons like uh, one they have you know less headcount because they're leaner two they pay the highest and three um they recruit the earliest and so like most of the students that are getting into elite boutiques are really the ones that like either started really, really early or just are like, I mean, you have to basically be like the most prepared by the time the elite boutiques start recruiting, yeah. right? Yeah. To your point, like about, you know, your friend in psychology class who's like spring semester, sophomore year, just starting to think about banking. Like at that point, the elite boutiques are probably too late for them, at least for summer recruiting, right? I mean, yeah. for something like that, we usually would say like, Hey, like, let's just try to get you the best thing we can get you. That's still left for your right. summer. Right? And you might have to recruit again for full time. And that, that, that's probably the only way to get in at that point. Right. Yeah. But, but this is why, like, it's so, um, th th there needs to be like a sense of urgency that I feel like is lacking for a lot of students, mm -hmm. probably not deliberately, but just, to your I think it's a lack of knowing yeah and I think knowing. I yeah. had absolutely no idea as well you know I thought like yeah banking is early I didn't know it was this early until I actually looked at your videos like that was the first thing that even made me realize I think like one of your videos kind of has like a timeline thing going about like how the whole process works you had like a diagram or something in yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. I mean, who, who knows, maybe in like 10 years, they're going to be recruiting like high school seniors, but <laughs> that's the running yeah. joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't know how good of a process it is to be recruiting so early, but I mean, it's just how it is. And if you want to, you know, be successful in it, um, you kind of have to start thinking about it pretty early. So for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, Awesome, man. I mean, look, um, do you, you give a, I, I usually end the interview by asking, um, you know, for one piece of advice that you want to give to people, but I feel like you've already given so many really yeah. so much, really good advice along the way. So, um, I won't ask you another one, just also in the interest of time, but, um, yeah, I mean, I have time as well. So if, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to stay longer, but if you have to get going. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, but I was just going to say like, look for for people that are you know still uh, listening to this like you know it, maybe you're in a similar situation where you go into a great school you, know, you got good grades you're doing all the right things um but it's just it's just very competitive and you understand that like that alone is not necessarily going to be enough right like it's that's almost like table stakes yeah right? and then the next question you need to ask yourself is like okay, now I'm on this, I'm on campus where like, there's like 500 people applying for these jobs. How do I make myself stand out? Mm -hmm. um, like what is your, you gotta ask yourself, like, what is your competitive advantage? Like, what is yeah. your edge, right? And yeah. I think that the biggest edge you can have in investment banking recruiting is just like a system or a process you can follow that will allow you to do things a lot more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Because- uh -huh. Like for you to go to a top school with a rigorous academic workload and to still maintain good grades, like that's a huge time commitment, just being a full-time student. Then on top of that, you got to add like, oh, I got to do these part-time internships. Yeah. Oh, I got to network with a bunch of bankers. Oh, I got to, you know, learn technicals. I got to learn behaviorals. I got to like, you know, take leadership positions in clubs. Like you, you, you add everything up. Like you only have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. <laughs> so like if you if you have to like do a bunch of trial and error and figure everything out and make a bunch of mistakes and then have to start over when you mess up like then you it's going to be a lot harder for you to win that way 100 percent. like i can say this like pretty certainly i i really don't know if my outcome would have been the same you know if i didn't have wall street mastermind just because first of all i think one of the biggest 
changes is like being able to get that internship my freshman summer it kind of definitely changed my trajectory of where things went but then also i had the you know flexibility you know focus on networking which is honestly such a big thing because i knew that my ability to learn the technicals i could also do it at the same time in a very streamlined accelerated process like I, those technical modules are amazing, man. Like <laughs> really like they're, they're so good. Um, it's, it's just like, so like perfectly made in terms of you get all the concepts learned, you get all the questions you need to know, and even the advanced ones, um, to teach you everything like really, really well. And that's the most important thing, especially at like, you know, some of these, like, um, you know, more selective boutiques, right. Is, you need to not just have an understanding of like the MI guide questions, but you need to have an understanding of the actual concepts. And I think that's something a lot of people don't really take into consideration. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe that might pass you at like some of these bulge brackets, but um, at boutiques, like they really, really care about that. And I think Sam does a great job at teaching you that and like really understanding the concepts because that's so important, especially for some of these interviews where. Yeah, I mean, they ask you some questions that you'd probably be stumped, like if you didn't if you didn't really understand what you're talking about. Yeah, I think that like, um, you know, people always wonder, like, I mean, because they hear people like you from the program mm. say like, oh, my God, the technical module is amazing. And they're like, yeah. how different can it be? Because you're teaching the same. It's not that we're teaching different concepts, right? We're still teaching you about the three statements. Yeah. And m a lbo yeah. like, yes it's the same concepts but i think it's like it's like khan academy for investment banking like i think that's the best way to think about it like, like i don't that. think there's anything like that out there right so i mean for me i love watching videos i think i guess personally for me that's why i find it so valuable i love watching videos to teach concepts and i think that's why like you know like so many high schoolers like i don't even remember the name but i think it's like organic chemistry tutor or something but like for chemistry class in high school like i'd always watch that and that guy has like millions of views right it's just because those videos are just like so much easier to grasp than reading through like like 50 pages of a textbook for the same thing right it's it's just yeah. much easier to understand and yeah i mean that's exactly how i thought about it it's like yeah it's like khan academy for investment banking technicals and it's just it works really well i love that i gotta make that our, our new our new uh, yeah. tagline well, yeah mastermind the con academy of yeah. <laughs> you're oh, hired as my head of marketing no, I'm just yeah, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um no but i think like honestly just like and we can wrap up on this but like um just like anything else you're trying to learn like a lot of the times it comes down to how good is the person that's how good is your teacher at actually yeah. teaching Right, like you, you guys are all in school. You probably have some professors that are- Like, no, like you don't learn this at, like you're not gonna be able to just take some warden classes, like those basic fundamentals and think like you'll be fine for banking recruiting. I mean, maybe if you're like really, really paying attention and you're able to connect everything, but it's not very streamlined. And honestly, like, yeah, like I took like my accounting class, finance class, like fall semester, sophomore year, but like it's not enough, you know, like for like the level of technicals and like, it's it's a different way of approaching it like those three statement questions like walk me through those three statements like you're not learning that that type of process in your accounting right. class yeah yeah no so it's just like i mean you guys have probably all experienced the difference between like having a good professor and having a bad professor right and then like for the class where you have a bad professor it just makes things a lot yeah. harder for you to like understand and do well right yeah. um you know, speak, you just remind me, speaking of Warren, we had another, uh, someone who's like one or two years above you from Warren. And one time she mm -hmm. told me, well, Sam, I just went through your uh, two hour accounting training and I learned more in that training than I learned in my entire. <laughs> you know, the funniest thing, actually, I was watching your accounting videos to study for my accounting class because like it was more. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So. We also help you get better grades in school. No, I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, guys, if any of this resonates with you, if you want that edge, if you want to do things more efficiently, um, whether it's because maybe you feel like you're slightly behind relative to your peers, or you know you just want to, um, or maybe you like where you're at, but you just want to like maximize uh, like the outcome that you get, right? You want to get the 
put your best foot forward, um, then I'll encourage, encourage you guys to um, just reach out, schedule a call with our team. Um, if you want to work with us, um, yes, there's investment, but also more importantly, like it's by application only. Like we don't work with every single person because um, one, we don't have bandwidth. And two, uh, we really only want to work with the people that we feel comfortable offering a guarantee to. Right. Yeah. Doesn't mean I, yeah, like I want to, if I could touch on that. Yeah. Like I, I think like when I heard that the first time I thought, okay, he's just like saying that to make it seem more selective. Like, okay. Like he's, it's just like a marketing tactic or whatever, but I mean, quite honestly, like, no, it, it makes a lot of sense, especially now because like he's going to be putting all this effort and he's not even getting his money back. And like, again, going back to my point that it, this is not at all like, oh, you just buy the program and you're going to get banking, even if you're at Warden, even if you have 4.0, like if you don't go through this stuff, like it's, it's useless. Um, yeah. Like you Absolutely. need to go through this stuff and like put in the effort. Yeah. I mean, our money back guarantee basically says, as long as you do the work yeah. and you don't get a job, then we'll give you your money back. But like, obviously you have to do the work, right? Cause like, yeah. We're not going to sit here. Like, honestly, if I told you, Hey, you don't have to do anything. You just join Welsh Mastery. You're going to get the job. <laughs> then that would definitely be a scam. <laughs> like, this is, this yeah. is not like magic. It's like, you still got to do the work, but we're going to help, you know, just make your life a lot easier and a lot simpler, but you still, you still got to go out and execute. Right. You still got to like put in the reps. Right. So, but anyway, if you guys are interested in that, reach out, book a call with our team. Well, like, you know, learn more about your situation, see if you're a good fit. Um, you may or may not be, even if you're not, like, even if you don't qualify and we don't think we um, are, are, are able to help you, uh, at a minimum, we'll give you some advice on what we think you should do, um, even, even on your own without us, okay? So either way, like, you know, our goal is for you to walk away from this call with at least some value, right? Um, and so if you want to do that, you can go to www.wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply. The street is abbreviated to ST. So it's wallstmastermind.com slash apply. And uh, we look forward to talking to you. All right. So uh, with that said, Akash, um, I took up way more of your time than I intended to. So oh, no, no, it was a blast. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for sharing uh, and being so generous with um, all the advice and uh, super happy for you. Uh, you're going to a great shop and, uh, you know, I, I look forward to seeing what you accomplish. and. Uh, also, you know, I hope, hope I hope you continue to stick around and uh, you know in the community yeah. and 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 uh, and continue to network with everyone else here. And um, you know, I think we're really building something special here. So, um, and you're a big part of that. So, absolutely, yeah. No, thank you so much, Sam. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back with uh, more of these for you guys in the near future. And uh, until next time. All right.